behind me it might look like I'm just in a normal park in a normal city, but I'm actually in the Genocide Museum in Phnom Penh. The Genocide Museum itself is a very somber place to visit, but it is an extremely important historical place to visit when you're in Cambodia. You'll get to see and experience some of the worst memories of what humans can do to each other. Before we go any further, this video is going to be intense and discuss themes of torture and human genocide, so please proceed with caution. Now the practical information. The museum is located in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. It costs five US dollars to enter and then another five US dollars for the audio guide, which I highly recommend. It is important to dress modestly and allow for up to three hours to fully take in the complex. S21 was once a peaceful school before the Khmer Rouge unleashed chaos across Cambodia between 1975 and 1979. During this period, the school was converted to a top secret torture prison for enemies of the Khmer Rouge. The estimated 12 to 20,000 prisoners brought here, there were only ever 12 known survivors. You can usually meet with one of them during your visit. The Angkor set out to rebuild society during this period, wiping out any sign of progress and restarting Cambodia again from year zero as a totally pure self-sustaining state. To do this, the Khmer Rouge set out to, in their own words, smash any enemies of Angkor. This included anyone who was educated, considered a professional, had links to foreign countries, wore glasses, was from an ethnic group other than Khmer, and anyone else who could even merely be considered as an enemy of Angkor. This is a photograph of Pol Pot, the leader of the regime, and Dutch, the leader of the S21 prison and the signer of executions. These were the prison cells where the prisoners were held. Every single act at the prison was designed to dehumanise the prisoner. Prisoners were not even referred to as he or she, but it. So these large rooms were used to house up to 60 or more prisoners. They were shackled together by these long iron rods where up to nine people were shackled together at a time and then they were anchored to the ground so they could not move. And if when they were turning in their sleep, their shackles made a sound, they were beaten. Absolutely insane. I mentioned earlier, there were only ever 12 known survivors of S21, essentially meaning if you were brought here, it was a death sentence in waiting. These are the torture rooms. The basic flow of a prisoner's life at S21 included being captured, dehumanised and then tortured up to three times a day until you confess to the crimes against Angkor. Bear in mind, nearly every prisoner was innocent but was classed as a criminal for their profession, social status, ethnic group or if they wore glasses. Once you were eventually coerced into confessing to a fictitious crime in order to stop the barbaric torture, this confession was given to Dutch who would then sentence you to be executed at one of the killing fields. Think about that for a minute. The torture must be so bad to make you confess to crimes that you didn't commit, knowing that it was going to result in a death sentence for you. Another torture apparatus were these gallows, not used to execute prisoners, but to torture them. Prisoners were bound by their hands behind their back and strung up until they passed out. Then they were lowered and forced headfirst into one of the three barrels you see at the bottom, which were filled with human waste revived and then the process was repeated and repeated and repeated. Throughout the prison you can see many photographs and hear testimonies of the prisoners and cadres of the Khmer Rouge who later became prisoners or were arrested once the country was liberated. The Khmer Rouge operated under the mottos we must smash our enemies and better to make a wrong arrest than to let the enemy eat us from within. Before you come to Cambodia, and especially to the Genocide Museum, I highly recommend you watch or read the story, First They Killed My Father. An incredible story shot from the point of view of a young girl growing up during the Khmer Rouge period. It will provide you a great basis of knowledge on the history of the Khmer Rouge and Cambodia. I'll put a link to the story in my description. So I'm just finishing up at the Genocide Museum and oh my God, it is pretty overwhelming learning about what happened here. So while I do recommend everybody who comes to Phnom Penh comes here at least once, just be ready. You're going to see some things and you're going to hear some stories that'll shock you. Oh man, I don't know. I'm struggling. I'm struggling to put into words like how, how can humans do these things to other humans? Absolutely insane. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and do take a look at that link in the description. Until next time, have a great day.